Mr. President, uh, I rise today to speak on this uh, infrastructure jobs bill, and, and actually I think my good friend from Minnesota has done a great job of explaining why we need to be focused on infrastructure. I think if I was going to summarize my comments as they might um, compare with hers would be that we, we need to be focused on the longer term problem. The, we, we certainly do have a committee that's working on a two year bill. Uh, and here we're spending time today talking about a bill that I think is likely not to happen. And even if it didn't, did happen, would it be better than a two year bill? Of course not. Does it do anything better than the traditional uh, infrastructure focus of the country that included communities and cities and, uh, and states instead of federal bureaucrats? Of course it doesn't. Uh, and, uh, and, and we need to be focused on the right thing, Mr. President, at the right time. The top concern on American minds today is riding our nation's economy, of uh, having an economy that creates private sector jobs. Uh, and while we take different approaches to addressing this, I think the Congress is genuinely uh, united in understanding what the goal should be. We just have such a, a difference of opinion as to how to get there. Uh, what role does infrastructure play in, uh, in uh, private sector job creation and competition? It plays a critical role. In fact, it's one of the few places where the federal government actually can take, take actions that specifically create private sector jobs. Uh, roads and bridges are maintained and kept clean and, and kept open and, uh, and supervised by state and local uh, authorities, but they're built by private sector contractors. So that's a good thing, and the question is, what is the best way uh, to get there? Unfortunately, we're two years removed from the expiration of the last uh, surface transportation bill. Uh, and uh, we're talking in the Transportation Committee, I'm told, I'm not on that committee, but I know that Chairman Boxer and uh, the ranking Republican, Mr. Inhofe, are talking about how you can have a two-year extension, another two-year extension of that bill. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're not talking about the four or five or six year uh, surface transportation bills that we've traditionally talked about because that's the kind of time it takes uh, to really make a project that matters work. Uh, we, we've been holding the, 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 uh, the surface transportation bill together with uh, duct tape and super glue for a couple of years now. And the last time we did this in September, we extended that bill for six months. Uh, and the president, frankly, began to put his energy behind uh, this different proposal uh, that I have lots of concerns about. But I'd ha I have even greater concerns about the fact that the energy and focus is there instead of on how do we get at least a two-year extension of a transportation bill, a surface transportation bill uh, that would work. I said we were holding the bill uh, together, the legislation together by duct tape and, tape and super glue. Unfortunately, that's probably how we're also holding the transportation system together. Because you can't have uh, the, the Eisenhower vision that was mentioned earlier of an interstate uh, system. You can't have an Eisenhower vision that has a six month shelf life or a six month window of opportunity. If you're gonna have that kind of system put in place, you have to have a system that is put in place with an understanding that this is an ongoing program, that we have ongoing sources of funding, that we have ongoing ability uh, to contract. Uh, and that's why, Mr. President, we need to be talking about uh, the best way to find new and innovative ideas uh, to invest in our infrastructure development uh, I'm increasingly concerned uh, that this legislation we're talking about today uh, takes a short-term federal bureaucrat knows best approach rather than uh, the approach that we've had good success with in the country when we really were building roads and bridges and airports and infrastructure in ways that matter. Uh, in all of our home states, certainly in my home state of Missouri, community leaders and job creators tell me that they're clearly looking for more certainty of how to create jobs. Uh, they need the ability to look beyond three or six months in order to plan uh, and anticipate investment levels and expand their operations. Uh, we need to make smart investments in our nation's infrastructure so that people who build infrastructure uh, can look forward with certainty. 
and communities who are dependent on infrastructure can look forward with certainty. And a business uh, that's thinking about making a job expanding commitment to a community uh, knows what the highway plan is for the decade, not for the next day. And we have to get there and you can't get there six months at a time. Uh, this piecemeal approach, uh, including the continuing resolution and the so-called stimulus bill and uh, other things that postpone our efforts uh, for communities to really get funding, the, the whole idea of an infrastructure bank that would uh, go for projects that had some ability to pay for themselves. Uh, and when you ask questions about that, nobody knows what that means. Nobody knows why, if these, if these things have ability to pay for themselves, uh, states could bond them out tomorrow. If you have a revenue stream that will pay off uh, the building of a bridge, if you figured out how to create that revenue stream, states could issue that bond right now. Uh, the, the only reason to have a federal uh, infrastructure bank is because the infrastructure bank is insolvent and not planned to be solvent, and only the federal government can give it the uh, credibility it needs so it could ever possibly be used. But that's not the long-term solution to, to infrastructure. Uh, as we've witnessed in recent months, the president's idea of a jobs plan is apparently focusing on holding press conferences in front of bridges. He had one just today uh, to sell the idea that another stimulus bill uh, will create more jobs. Now, how does the president ever expect shovel-ready shovel projects to get to be shovel-ready? They only get to be shovel-ready if you have a lot of time to plan and you know what the funding source is, and you know how you're gonna not just start the project, but complete the project. Uh, bridge replacement uh, and major infrastructure investments and projects are critical, um, but, but if, if, if this bill does become law, 10% of the money uh, the uh, Congressional Budget Office estimates would be spent between now and September 30th of next year. So this is no economic recovery plan, and it's also no long-term highway plan. 10% of the money spent in the next 11 months is not what it takes to get this job done. And of course, 50% of that, of all the money would be spent by the Federal Highway Department rather than allocated as we've allocated Federal Highway money since the 1950s back to the states uh, with uh, incentives for them to match that money and to do the best they could to really have a fair distribution of highway and uh, surface transportation money across the country. Uh, these piecemeal solutions won't work. Uh, there are many examples of uh, communities that are facing challenges and they want to know how that, how that question is going to be met. In, in Washington, Missouri, not Washington, D.C., but uh, Washington, Missouri, there is a, uh, an 80-year-old bridge that goes across the Missouri River uh, and it needs to be replaced. And it's needed to be replaced for some time now. But are we gonna let the President of the United States decide if that's the bridge we replace or not? There's, there's some things that the President should decide. You know, the President is without any question in the best position to decide what is the best way to go into Abbottabad and get Osama bin Laden. The President is not in the best position to decide what, where the bridge is gonna be built uh, or uh, between Kentucky and Ohio. Now, I know he likes to give that example a lot because the Republican Senate leader's from Kentucky and the Republican Speaker of the House is from Ohio, and he says we need a bridge between Ohio and Kentucky. That may actually be true, but the President of the United States is not the best person to solve that problem. The best people to solve that problem are the people in Kentucky and Ohio who get uh, their, their gas tax money, their transportation money, and whatever kind of funding we can figure out meets the needs of the future, and say, here's our 10-year plan, here's how we're gonna fund our 10-year plan, uh, and we're gonna spend, in year one, we're gonna do the bridge planning uh, for which of these bridge possibilities we need, and in year two, we're gonna plan the bridge we decided we need, and in year three, we're gonna build the bridge. Uh, and maybe by year six or seven, somebody's using the bridge. Uh, this, is, this is the idea, these ideas of these short-term solutions uh, just simply don't work. State departments of trans transportation are hesitant to commit to long-term uh, projects without the assurance of a funding stream in the future. Uh, the president's bus tour will not provide individuals with more certainty. 
uh, but a steady, long-term investment plan will work to answer these questions. We need a clear federal infrastructure blueprint to help county commissioners, to help contractors and cities, to help statewide departments of transportation lay the groundwork to plan, uh, to, uh, access lo uh, to assess local needs, to hire more employees, to make the decisions necessary to encourage economic growth. In addition to the short-term approach that I think this bill has, I'm concerned with some of the policies included in, in this proposal. With the increased funding for discretionary uh, proposals, uh, grant programs like the Federal Tiger Grants and now the Infrastructure Bank, the message being sent to the states is that Washington bureaucrats will set the priorities. Our entire infrastructure network is in desperate need of comprehensive updating uh, that, it, that refuses uh, to be put off any longer. We need to refocus all our efforts on the modes of transportation, the flexibility to bet between them, uh, why we continue to rely on fragmented programs makes no sense to me or lots of other people. The answer is not to continue writing blank checks to the administration and then hoping that the people will have um, Make the who make the decision with zero accountability, frankly, will somehow make that in the best interest of all of our states. Uh, we need to do the hard work of, of crafting and investing in a formula of, uh, that, that works for the future. Chairman Boxer and Ranking Member Enhoff have been working hard putting together a, a new reauthorization bill. Uh, I, I wish that was a six-year bill, not a two-year bill, but I'll tell you, a two-year bill has greater possibilities for success than a six months bill uh, that um, will go away before it is able to do any good. I, I look forward to starting the work. I hope we can stop uh, taking time on things that won't work and start solving the problems that have to be solved for the country to have the private sector job uh, recovery that we need and to be prepared uh, for the next century as well as people in this body um, worked in the 1950s to see that we'd pre be prepared for the last 50 years of the last century. And uh, I believe, Mr. Uh, Mr. President, there's the absence of a quorum and uh, challenge the quorum. The clerk will call the roll.